one of the things that we don't have on here uh, slide wise is one that we saw with what was it the carrot powder mm -hmm. you know carrot powder came in you use uh, you look at it it's orange smells like carrot run it under a certain test you have proper protein levels and things like that mm -hmm. looks like carrot and so you just sign it off as carrot however we did that one extra test uh and turned out to be modified cornstarch dyed orange so mm -hmm. What do you need to do to determine whether something really is what it is? I think there's there's pitfalls and different te you know tests are meant to measure specific things. <laughs> Correct. Kind of and what do you want to measure? Right. And so if you're only running run tests, you're you're turning a blind's eye to a different aspect of of an ingredient, right? Because the test is specified for one aspect, <laughs> one sure. objective, quantitative, or qualitative analysis. Um, not the am I whole. am I running the test to see whether it really is what it is, or am <laughs> I running the test just so I can release a material and and mm -hmm. make a product to sell? So big perfect. difference. Well, I think uh, we have a kind of another one with, uh, I guess, turmeric here. That yeah. Um, so this one's uh, also an interesting one. Let me just back a little bit to what uh, Kevin said, you know, and what just in general, doing organoleptic testing, which is an accepted methodology in certain cases. So, you know, getting a powder in, you're not going to be able to tell that powder is really alfalfa or even you know, turmeric. It may seem like it looks pretty close, uh, but you don't know if there's something else in there. Now, if you get whole turmeric root in, like actual, you know, fingers of turmeric, you can then do some organoleptic testing. Now, there's other tests like aflatoxins and other things you need to do, heavy metals. Uh, but in that case, you know, when you have that macroscopy, if you will, that whole material, you can ID it that way. And that's not a problem. Uh, broccoli, for example, and stuff like that. Uh, when you get into these um, herbs, sometimes they can look very similar to a related species. So it's very hard then to just idea by visual or, you know, smell. Um, but there is a place for it, but most of the industry is getting powdered material or so. And so that, that doesn't, it's not fit for purpose, if you will. Mm. Um, turmeric here, and, you know, what we see a lot of times with, you know, turmeric, I think I want to say 70% of the U.S. has taken some kind of turmeric supplement or using it in their diet somehow, um, is very popular. And with very popular items, um, the chances of adult. Uh-oh. Uh, Nick froze up. <laughs> I think he was going to say the chances of adulteration are much higher. Very high. <laughs> adulteration go up exponentially. You, you, you we we, yeah, we finished your statement. So <laughs> no, I, I heard that. So I can hear you. Um, this uh, so the, it's exponential. The chances of adulteration, and you know, we saw with this turmeric uh, come in. It looked fine on the HPTLC. Uh, but they try to get tricky and they know that turmeric's a lot of starch in it. So if we go to the next slide, and like I said, with this HPTLC, I wouldn't question it, but once we put it on the microscope, even if putting it on the microscope, you know, there's turmeric as a root, so it has a lot of starch in it, period. Uh, but when they added the other starch, the way the starch aggregates, like these little squares, these little UFOs, if you will, it's inside the powder, um, that shouldn't be there. It shouldn't, you know, the truth is out there. It's, it's, uh, it's that's not, <laughs> uh, that's there. not how it's supposed to be. And it takes a trained eye to be really able to identify that. Um, one of the reasons we partner with some of the best minds of the industry, um, because we know we can rely on them to catch these subtle, um, differences that leads to knowing that it has been highly contaminated with added starch that's been, you know, with color to weigh down the material. And once again, we see this with items a lot of times that are used quite a bit. Why is olive oil and honey one of the most adulterated items? Because the world consumes more than it produces. And, you know, um, that's where you can make uh, the quick buck. Even though it's, you know, only a little bit you're adding in, you know, you're selling a lot of material. Um, so they can get pretty sneaky, uh, but you have the right quality system, the right test methods, the right personnel working on this you'll be able to catch, you know, 99% of the items out there. I think that's so important. It's, it's, it's in, it goes into almost like when you have a refined taste for a food and you, you can mm -hmm. almost just taste, right. As a, a connoisseur, you know, when it's of, you know, optimal quality and 
you know, it takes a trained eye or a trained, you know, somebody that's been in the industry for years to sometimes see these discrepancies, right? I mean, the mm. average microscopist, is that, is, that, is that microscopist? I don't know if that's an actual uh, career, but, um, you know, individual trained in microscopy, it t could take years to get to this yeah. level of proficiency. So, um, yeah, pertinent. Let's, um, well, I think, so great way of kind of segueing into our top 20, 21 adulterations for the year this past year because you know those were case studies um i guess over the past couple of years right but I, I think they really introduce some key features to our quality systems which are, is that orthogonal testing you know not just taking one test for granted and you know passing it along it's that redundancy and having a system behind what you do not just one aspect to what you do right um so shall we just dive right in gentlemen? go right in all right Okay, um, so this was our case uh, 1186. Uh, this was with a fig fruit, and this was supposed to be a, just a regular fig powder we got in. Um, had a history of purchasing this for our uh, inflammasidin. Uh, great product, you know, fig has a, uh, actually a proteolytic enzyme called fysin in it, mm. um, which is good for uh, helping um, support uh, inflammation, if you will, to reduce yeah. it. Um, so it's very important. Um, we tested by HPTLC and, you know, what we found was, and I think you can go to the next slide maybe on this one, if it's there, um, that, you know, you can see lanes 10 and 11 here um, is a sample. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, well, 12, 13, 14 are actually representatives of thick. And you can notice that even at the lowest level there at 12, you can see, still see stronger bands than any of our samples. And what this came out, and I've talked about this before, and it still happens to this day, this is a recent example, of uh, people take, taking a, a fruit powder or you know, herb or something, extracting out all the nutrients, if you will, the active ingredients. And instead of the, you know, the, what's left over, it's called the mark, using that for feed or some other compost or something else, they're selling that as well, trying to make as much money off that material as possible, saying this is fig powder. Well, yeah, it's, it's, fig, it's a fig shell, I guess you can call it. Everything else has been pulled out, and it's really none of the active items in there. In fact, the reports show that in, during the extraction of testing, it usually comes out as a viscous liquid, and it was not that. So basically everything that was good or made it... Uh, let's say effective, if you will, uh, was missing. 